Welcome along to our latest offering here on the Irish Rally Podcast. We're doing things slightly different this week, being the week of the Carlos Stages Rally and it being kind of close to, to my heart as well as geographically close. We decided to go an alternative route and put out a few interviews throughout the week rather than just putting one out or two out or three out the same night just to build the hype, uh, build the hype, so to speak. So, yeah, uh, the first of those I'm delighted to say is with none other than Mr. Tommy Randall, a man who... I sure look what can be said, it hasn't been said before. Fabulous smart to escort, very standoutish colours, very standoutish liveries. Uh, he was the very first winner of the Mark II Challenge in 2004. So that segues us nicely. And we're going to have a chat with Tommy about different things throughout his career as well. So just to bring in the Brandon on screen, Sheehy Moore Group, obviously, uh, are uh, sponsoring the... Uh, Carlos Stages Rally this weekend, along with O'Brien Cement, the Seven Oaks Hotel. Then stage sponsors at Code Red, uh, Derry Cummins Electrical and Mechanical Services, GK Print, National Automation Limited, in fact, Smith Trailers and Walsh School Furniture as well. So let's bring in Mr. Tommy Randalls. Welcome aboard, sir. Great to be chatting to you here on the Irish Rally Podcast. How's all with you? Oh, very well. Thanks very much, Kevin, for inviting me on, on this evening. So, yeah, all well at the moment anyway. Get recovering after two tough days of rallying in the in the rally of the lakes there a week and a half ago. Yeah. So. Still you're still at it. You can't you can't get enough of it. How long how long are you actually at it now, Tommy? Um <clears throat> I'm afraid to say, but I'm at it over 40 years. I did my first rally in circa the months of 1981. I was 19 years old at the time. Uh ironically, that was the year that Ari Vatnin won. The world championship in a Mark II Escort. So a Mark II Escort that time was um was the car of the era, and I had a road Mark II Escort that we 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 developed into a, a rally car here at home in the yard. I was a young mechanic at the time. We put a roll cage, put a bigger engine into it, got a few wide wheels, and struck off for the circuit of Munster. So that was 1981. I think we were car number 143. I remember getting the phone call. I remember getting the phone call from the clerk of the course, I can't remember, and he said, look, you're in the rally. I'd say we were probably the last, of the, or almost the last car in the rally. And we knew nothing about rallying. Myself and a, a friend of mine called James Sullivan, we knew absolutely nothing about rallying or time cards or nothing. We just mad to get on the road, struck off to Liston Banner. So that, that's how long I'm at the game now, uh, Kevin. Wow. That's amazing because obviously... Your, uh, I was just looking up your records or whatever. So the Rally of the Lakes in 83 is on the record, but that circuit of Munster isn't there. And I know the lads are endeavouring fairly strongly to get as much detail into that as possible. It's a massive undertaking. It's a massive pro um, project, the EWRC. And um, I know there's a few people involved in it. And I would urge anyone while we're at it, actually, on the topic of it, to give the boys a few bob. It's not a big... It's just a donation thing. like So it's a great resource. It's a great service. Um it's going to take time to get everything up to speed and up to, to pace, uh, especially when you're like Tommy Randall, who's been at it, as he says, more than 40 years, whatever. But like, what, what keeps the, I suppose, jumping into it, what's, what keeps the flame lighting? Why, why stay going at it? The passion, is it burning as strongly as it was? Uh, how, do you, how do you view it now? I suppose the competitive streak, uh, is, is that still there? Are you still kind of out to, you know, with, with the bit between the teeth, or, or what way are we looking at rallying now compared to young Tommy Randles? It's just hard to explain it. Back then, when I did my first rally, as I said earlier in another, I was never really interested in rallying very young. It's always tractors and machinery, but then driving was my passion, really, driving anything. And then we got a love for rallying. Um, the funny thing is I've never done an awful lot of rallying. I've been rallying a long time, which was periods on and off, because rallying was never for number one in all eyes, but I have a good, a good friend there called Mort Sullivan, and um, if that relationship had broken up many years ago, he'd have saved me an awful lot of money, but Mort has uh, come into the house here for years and years and years, and when I said I have enough, he'd say, no, give it one more go, and we go to rallies together, and we do a lot of things together in rallying, we talk a lot about rallying, and um, I, I, I pass the car sometimes and get back at it again. I'm at it now, really, I suppose. I'm at it now just to uh, do something, not to stop doing, you know, have some kind of a sport in my life. But yeah, like, I mean, the, the, the Rally of the Lakes there now, myself and Dermot Lynch were together um, after a long time. And really and truly, myself and Charlie Hickey, another great friend of mine there that um, is rallying nearly as long and maybe longer. And um, 
we had a great a great battle there on the lake swapping seconds and we were the two the only two 60 year olds in the top 20 it's every everybody from 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 the two boss up were, were in their mid 30s so you know it's great it's it's one of the sports you can do once you can do it you know i mean you can you don't you wouldn't play a game of football so easy but you could sit behind the wheel of a rally car and drive it so uh, to answer the question how high do i stay at it sometimes i don't know but we're at it anyway so we'll keep going kevin yeah for another bit anyway. right dead right and i uh do you know it's interesting you say that because you made the ga reference there and harlow would be a good example of it where your touch is not in and things are off but you've remarked upon the fact that you came behind the wheel and you still kind of have it after maybe a few stages like that's that's amazing really you know that uh you can go in and do that still and do it to a pretty good standard as well yeah like i mean do you know the cars now have improved an awful lot like i mean the, the rigor suspensions and, and the tires are very good and like when we started rallying back we just drove to finish we didn't really we just drove cars like you drive a truck do you know what i mean we, we we drove to get around we drove to come home we drove to finish you know but rallying today you now like it's it's with pace notes and um dvds and uh notes that wasn't there at all in in, in the early years and uh People are, uh, you know, you. When, when I said into rally car first, I, I didn't even, you know, well, we drove cars and we drove cars fast and we don't handbrake turns and we only had, there wouldn't be powerful cars, the Mark 1 and Mark 2 escorts. And, um, but today, you know, like there's so much information online, you can learn so much before you can go into a car. It probably took us 10 years to learn what what, what the young people today would have starting out, you know, because we had, we had no in car cameras. You didn't really sit in with other rally drivers. So you learned the trade yourself over a, a long period of time. And the machinery we had was very basic. Everything was repaired and fixed in, 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 at home. And um, you just drove to finish the rally. And once you got it finished, you were delighted. That was your goal at the time. But like now today, you drive flat out as hard as you can go. But um, it's, it's, it's um, you know, we have some great drivers in this country now. Like, and I mean, it's great to see them coming up. Um, it would be nice to see a stepping stone for young drivers to the WRC, which we don't have at the moment. It would be, I would like to see a bit more for younger drivers, an easier way to get to the top besides costing a fortune. You know, with the Billy Coleman Award, which is a great help, but it's not enough, in my opinion. Not to be nice to see um, to see a stepping stone, like maybe from you know the Irish thing to the British Championship to the ERC to the WRC. It would be nice to see a ladder to climb. It isn't there yet, but I, I think to something we should look at for the future of rallying, you know, with younger people, because it's so hard to get in now to rallying and so expensive. You would want, um, you know, for the talented driver, you'd want a stepping stone to carry him further than just the Irish scene, you know? Mm -hmm. And obviously a couple of really talented drivers and navigators come from your neck of the woods. Um... You know, like Rob Duggan would be a pretty good example who would have been in the JWRC or whatever and has, you know, has unbelievable talent like. And even if you want to go from a navigator's point of view, a good friend of his, Mikey Galvin, sitting there with Keith Cronin. Like, Keith Cronin has all the talent in the world as well. Um, and again, as we know, finance can be an issue there. So I think it's a, it's a good point you make. And while the governing body and all are doing their level-headed best, it would be just nicer to see that platform provided because I think we could have a good few drivers um, on the scene, and we probably would have had a lot more on the scene by now than what we do have or what we have had. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, Rob is a fantastic driver, and we have other good drivers too, like Colin. I don't know, there, there is and there's a, another young driver there now doing well in the juniors, Jason Farrell. He, they're all from mm. the thing. And, and Keith, of course, Keith, Keith Cornyn has been an exceptional talent. Um and they went to enormous lengths to, you know, they've won four British championships and they're going for a fifth. But like, it seems to be stalling, you know, uh, uh, the system, the manufacturers would want to be involved and the Motorsport Island would want to be involved. Uh, the talent, there should be a way, in, in any other sport, like if you were good at football or good at soccer or good at the golf, good at any other sport, there is, there's, it's an easier, it's easier and it's never easy in any professional sport, but it's easier than motorsport. Motorsport, you need an awful lot of money in motorsport. But I think manufacturers should be made 
bring on the young drivers like they should be i mean if somebody wins the junior in ireland uh he'd at least want you know a trip to, to malcolm wilson or to one of these manufacturers and if there's some other way he could win there and then if that if that if that could be a free drive in the british championship you know and if he wins that or comes well then another step with the erc and you know if it costs millions of pounds it won't happen um kevin it's just it's, it it isn't going to happen or it'll only happen for the very very wealthy people and that's not that should not be the case in my view there should be a pat affordable pat to the top or even to the erc anyway that, that and and you know the rallying in ireland is so popular at the moment and it's going so well and we have we have a great organization running it and we have great drivers here and craig breen and paul nagel i mean i uh, always be competing with, with paul nagel all our lives i mean it's great to see them at the top and i i really believe in craig breen to be honest and 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 paul and i, I feel if craig would could win one championship he could win three because he's one of those drivers um he's one of those drivers like that he's not making many mistakes he's he's 100 into it and he's committed to it and he has his works drive now and he needs a you know if the car is good enough and he has any bit of look at all if he could make one championship i think he'd, he he's capable of making more than one because like Johan Kanken and Lango you know they they all said he was never he, he he wasn't one of those drivers that that ran out but he was always he won four world championships he was a brilliant driver but he he just had the right combination of enough speed enough you know uh, enough uh, you know, sometimes the fellow with too much speed, they don't win too many championships because they make too many mistakes. So it's a balance between speed and and and, and good driving and, um, you know, the whole thing coming together. But uh, I do believe that if Craig could get a break, a good break, he has the drive to do it anyway. You know what I mean? And Paul as well. Like, you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see how they fare out, you know. But it's very mm -hmm. good for Irish Rally that we have these two boys in the World Championship. Yep. And it's lifting the profile in general of of the sport, which unfortunately Tom did kind of drop off slightly. Uh, well, more than slightly actually, because I know from being a chap going to the rally the lakes, you say that's uh, obviously quite close to you or whatever. Uh, you you would regularly hear stage updates, and now we're very dependent on social media for for that. But with Craig and Paul doing so well, when WRC is on, we're starting to see a little bit more. And I suppose we have to give John Kenny a bit of credit for that. Uh, he's a big rally man, and I'd say if John Kenny wasn't there, who knows? We we could be in a bit of trouble. Uh, terrible, I suppose, thing to be to be saying in many respects. But we have to be honest about it too, like, um, and that's that's just where we're at. So I I think I think the profile is improving, and I hope it stays going on an upward trajectory. And as you say, if we could tie in some sort of scheme, like it's mad if you look at just say soccer being an example. How many rags to riches stories do you hear? You hear several of them. But unfortunately, it never seems like we hear them in rallying because, you know, if they are, they're short-lived, aren't they? Because the money just runs out. Well, the money runs out. like And like the Billy Coleman Award, if you look down through the years, I don't, I don't know, does it actually do more harm than good? That's maybe the wrong thing to say. But like, it, 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 it's, it's not enough. It's it's a start, but it's not enough. Like and, and and then people have to put a lot of money in and and it stops there. Like it needs to go a step further with the young drivers. Like it needs to go that's in in my view, it needs to go a step further anyway. Um uh, you know, in other sports, people can climb to the top. And like going back to the tel going back to the the the, the television. Like Killian Duffy has a, uh, you know, he, he with, 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 with what they're doing is fantastic for the sport. Like it, 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 it's, it's been it live. But I still am a firm believer of television and what those television, McBracken and all these guys are doing. Like the television program, in my view, should not be um, left go because it's our only chance. And like sponsors, to get sponsors and get people they're doing a great job in these television programs and that they're, they're, they're nearly um, a tourism attraction now never mind a rally attraction and our television needs to be kept alive kevin because people will see the live thing on the day the rally fan that follows the, the thing live on the day he's a rally fan but there's other people that will see the television program that won't be and that's a broad a broader audience and for sponsors and i mean i've seen i mean i often got phone calls from my cousins 
and then even further away, like, oh, we saw you on television the other night. They wouldn't see that on Facebook, but they will see it on television. So there's a place for both. There's a place for both, and they shouldn't be left go. And, uh, you know, so even more Sport Ireland and our, our tourism, like, things have gone very expensive now. The television programs are hard to make and expensive to make, but, you know, it should it, the more Sport Ireland and the tourism, it should help step in there too as well, like, to keep that, um, because it's a huge... It's a huge industry, the, the rallying, like, you know, if, if the Rally Lakes comes to Killarney, tis where they're, where they're wrecking the weekend before, and then just three or four days, we, we come, people come from England, come maybe on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they're heading away Monday. Like, if to the All Island, it's only be four hours in the evening, if it was Sunday evening, and they're gone again, or maybe a weekend, but there's a huge um, business and following rallying, and um, we have the roads, and we have the organization and i think we need the coverage and we need the television coverage to keep it alive and, and it's healthy at the moment and i don't i don't think the television program should be overlooked to the modern social media we need both in my view kevin mm. yeah and uh, we've made the point very recently on this podcast with uh, anthony nester that they can coexist that we can have both because if the crew is out there then yes additional money is needed right in finance we're not we're not playing that down the crew is on site. Um, you know, you're getting the footage. You can you can make a highlight package out of that later. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like you have to yeah. duplicate the actual cost. It's more it's more of an add-on, I think, to you know, right, just say you're getting someone down to do the video for afterwards or whatever, and it's going out on, on TV. If that's going live, you still have everyone in situ or whatever. So it's a case probably of of getting that and just chopping it up and making it kind of relevant and produced for television while still having the live stuff there, you know? Um, and I suppose this, oh, is yeah. segueing us, this is segueing us nicely into something kind of similar, uh, but very much of its time from your point of view, where um, like we're on the topic of money as well, so it does segue in quite nicely. You went and did something that I don't think too many drivers did at the time going back, sure, Jesus, probably over 20 years ago now, with Plum Tindall and RPM when you were chasing a bit of sponsorship. So he got some of the footage that he had captured and was able to put together uh, a video for you to give out to possible people that might come on board as sponsors. And that was that was pretty good thinking at the time. Yeah, I mean that's something uh Dermot Lynch was with me at the time and we we we, we were we were we were when we this was before social to media and this is before um the internet you know what i mean and we were trying to do things different and trying to find a way and we we, we worked very very hard myself and Dermot, to get to get um you know to get to get decent sponsorship we, we always got bits and pieces but you know and we went to a lot of trouble and, and plum made a great job of that um video at the time and 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 while we sent it out to a good few companies and they were all very impressed in it, but like to get it to move to the next level was not so easy, you know. It wasn't it wasn't so easy. I suppose, you know commercially, you know, you you you'd need you you'd probably, you know, rally drivers and 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 navigators, they're very much on their own when they go looking for sponsorship. And maybe again. There, there, there should be, you know, organizations helping and maybe, I don't know, can more Sport Island do much about it, but like, there's very little help. Well, you can have great ideas, but when you're going fighting and looking for money for yourself, it's not so easy to ask for money for yourself, do you know what I mean? You, 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 but mm. if you, um, we need more help there, like we need, we need drivers, would, you know, people would need more more assistance to, to, to approach big companies and um, put forward the benefits of rallying and what it can do. Um, so it, it's a tough, it's, it's always tough to raise money, but that, that um, we got, we got, we got some help from that, but we didn't, we didn't get, you know, we done our best at the time, but we were before social media, but we were very much on our own, uh, Kevin, like, do you know what I mean? To be ringing up people and sending out the video um, and um, it, at least we, you know, it worked. It worked for us at the time, but it didn't. You know, more that more could be done, and more should be done for young drivers today. Is what I'm trying to say. You know, it is very hard to ask, though, in fairness, because even though it's great sponsorship exposure, advertising exposure that you're given, and you're all around the country, it's still always very hard to ask. 
Um, I, I'll, I'll be straight with you, even in terms of just say, this podcast. Like when we, luckily, we we've had sponsors pretty much the whole time, and they've come to to us here on the podcast. But I, I actually don't. <laughs> I'm not really comfortable with with kind of uh, we'll say asking or whatever. The few times I maybe did have to ask. Um, because even though you're providing a service and you feel like it's a pretty good one, you still feel like you're almost begging or something. Like it's just kind of that feeling that I'm not overly comfortable with. Like you are begging, and like not everybody is designed to collect money or to ask for money. That's what I'm saying. You know, we would we, we could do with a professional, um, some sort of a, a team anyway that would take that take the, the a driver on board and put his package together and source. He may, you know very hard to ask money for yourself for your own sports it's not an easy thing to do this is very same as what you're talking about there so um you know the young drivers need as much help as possible if our sport is to survive it has to survive from the from the young drivers up it's like the football and the ga they're playing games for under eights under sixes i'd say even under eights under tens under twelves you know all the ways up like that they're, they're you know i know you can't drive rally cars but we had the juniors now in the forestry now in the in in this year's we had it in the Kalani rally you know the j 1000s like that's a new thing and you know it was great to see them out again to see people like that out but we need we need more help down there to keep the sport alive because they're the ones that will be you know uh, they are the future of our sport and if we have talent mm-hmm. it's going to be there we're going to find it now you know yeah Definitely, for sure. It is, a, it is a great concept. Um, Let's bring it back to Carlos so the week this in it, right? And uh, in 2004, a novel idea came about with the Mark II Challenge, which is still obviously very much at the forefront this weekend. And uh, on that weekend, which I remember was quite close to my home place, um, you know, there was those massive hype, obviously. Uh, Billy Coleman was in town. Um, There was big talk about Mick Reddy. Uh, Mick Reddy and, and Ted Shotnessy, and that didn't quite turn out so well. I was I was on the corner at the time. Um and then obviously you're you're in the shake up yourself. I mean that's just a, a few off the top of my head that I'm that I'm uh that I'm naming. But you ended up winning it, the very first one. And if uh, our viewers look carefully in the background up that picture up on the wall there is the Seven Oaks Hotel and it is Mr. Tommy Randall's after winning the Marquee Challenge. So you spoke very affectionately about uh, about the event, uh, about the Mark II Challenge in general, but about that particular year with Radio Kerry, I think, going back a few months ago. But for people that maybe didn't get around to that, can you just talk us through why you speak so highly of the Carlos Davis Rally Mark II Challenge and how special that year and that victory was to you? Like, Well, it was a big part. That's why I put up the, well, the picture there, just in case you had forgotten that I won it, Kevin, to, not to make sure that when you were looking that you'd see the picture. But... And... <laughs> And the other one is in Mall's Gap. There, if we look closely at the crowd, there, they're 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 almost ready to tip the bonnet. But that, that's another famous stage. Well, yeah, that that was the highlight of my career anyway. Because when I started rallying, as I said, it was just a, a complete another clubman thing. But uh, we we're building this car for for a good bit and developing and putting stuff into putting, you know, coming along. And and uh, we were doing the lakes with the big rallies, our own local rally, and still is a big rally. And uh, myself and Dermot, um, we got a puncture on the very first stage of the lakes in 2004. And we we done a few championships up along there, and we were winning the class and stuff. And we were we were at the at the front of the of class 14 at the time. And um, we got a puncture on the first stage of the rally, and we dropped to last in 2004 in the national. And we fought our way back up for two days. Um, we never went home. Like, we never gave up on rallying. We, you, you don't ever, ever give up on rallying. I, I go as mad when I hear fellas pulling in that there might be something. You don't stop on rallying unless you have to stop. Do you know what I mean? I, I, if there's any chance, keep going. Because you don't know what will happen to anybody else around you. So that's our determination. We just keep going. End of story. Keep going. Um, unless obviously that the car is undrivable, but if, if there's any chance at all, a puncture would a puncture to me is not enough to go home, you know, even though it's very demoralizing. But we, we we fought on and we came from last up to second, and we were fighting with Phil Collins and we were driving flat out. So we, we were car, I think if you look at the times there, we were back 50 or 60 cars back, and we were up to second with two stages to go. And um, in the hairpin and block beamer, um. 
I, I was always a fan of the handbrake, and I suppose we were just uh, anyway. The, the, the diff broke there. The diff broke there after our two days, so we were out of the rally. And then the following stage, after uh, Phil Collins, his gearbox went, and um, he was out of the rally. And another friend of mine, Brendan Braston, who, who was who was Todd at the time, and he actually won that rally, and and it was great for Brendan to win that as well. But uh, it was um, that was, and in the meantime, then Dermot. I don't know, headed into the rally Carlo before or after, uh, or after, but then the Carlo Mach 2 Challenge came up and he had into that at the time. So we went down to Carlo and um, we, we were seated number eight on the road that, that, that day. I, I'd say that nobody was expecting Kerry Mann to come down and beat Mick Reddy and <laughs> David James and all these guys down there. So um, uh, so we went down to Carlo and um, we had a massive spin on the first stage just there on the camera to see it. And uh, we were we were pretty much on the pace when we were going because we had our two days fighting in Killarney. And um, so the rally went very well until we came, I think, to the third stage. Whatever happened on the stage that day, the gravel, there was a pile of gravel coming out that was nowhere to be seen in, in, in the recce. And we got cut out on a, on a, on a, on a, on a K right or a five right. And the car went off the road into the gravel. And we, we we pushed the car back out again anyway. And we, we were parking up the car and whatever. I walked around the car and I looked at the car. Now, the back was pretty open. See, the fit of the back was fairly good part of it missing. And I leaned underneath the car. And we were out of the car. And and I said to Jim, hop back in. He said, where are we going? Hop back in. I said, the car is parked. And um, we took off again anyway down the road. And the stage was blocked, believe it or not. And it was just the look of the draw on the day that the stage was blocked. And... Um, uh it 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 um that stage was blocked and that's that's the way it really goes you know what i mean and and we went down and we were sitting fastest times then uh, after that and, and before that maybe so it went on it was a great win for us because it was the first match two challenge and um and and we fought hard for the win do you know what i mean so it was it was a it was a rally we won't forget um it was just one of those, and nobody else can win it for the first time anyway. So we have that on the trophy. But um, and the car we had at the time, you know, we had a lot of work put into it. So it it um it just paid off on that day, you know. It was a glorious day, it was glorious sunshine, and Mick Bracken and all the boys uh, that were there at that rally, and Joe Connolly and, and all the boys, you know, it was, it was just a great weekend for us, Kevin. You know, so it won't be forgotten anyway. You know, yeah. I remember something about that. I don't know, was it the same stage that was blocked, but wasn't there a heap of muck and shit and stuff thrown out on the road or possibly talk of that, that maybe something was... was... It was. I mean, there, there, there was terrible... There was a... I mean, Billy Coleman went after that. that. That was a different turn to what, where we had our, our incident. But, um, uh, uh, yeah, there was... there was Someone said there was water poured across the road on, 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 on a dry day and it cut out... You know, cut out Billy and they cut out um, Pat Donegan and they cut out a good few drivers. And um, that that was uh, whether that was the case or not, I don't know. But uh, it, it it cut him out. And I, it was an amazing day for me, especially because I was following Billy Coleman for years. And I, my first time I see Billy Coleman in, in, in person was the 1980 Westcock Rally, um, driving API 100. But to be stuck this stage and talking to Billy Coleman, in fact, I. I I took a distributor cap off his car the same day because there was a misfire and he was trying to get it sorted. But I mean, to be talking about rallying and talking about uh, Ford works cars, uh, you know, who we just stages myself and Billy were talking. So it was just uh, an unbelievable experience. You know what I mean? So it was, it was very enjoyable. But um, yeah, so that was that was that weekend anyway. Isn't, isn't it class that like, when you look at the people that have come and won it since? And then even the people have come and competed. Like Alison McRae was there only a couple of years after. Um, and I mean, if you look at the transition of it now, okay, this year it's highly unlikely that we'll see Mark Two win. Uh, Ray Lockner won it the last time. Barry Mead won it in 2018, and uh, David Condell won it in 2017. The top three, I think, were uh, I think the top three in all those years were the top three the Mark Two Challenge, top three overall. Now this year, obviously, it's around the national, so you're probably not yeah. going to see Mark Two. Um, out doing an R five, but listen, listen, who knows? Stranger, stranger things have happened, and the top speed of the of the modern day class fourteens are are amazing, really. Um, a man we mentioned earlier was was Rob Duggan. I see him on the reserve list. I don't know will will his number get called? Maybe again, this puts out he will have been called. 
Uh, but uh, he would uh, throw a bit of a spanner in the works there because like the entry for it this year is is fantastic. It's great to see it back as around the national. But in general, just going back to the point, like the the transition of of where the Martu Challenge was and where it is now, and and the lads are, are going hell for leather to win it still, like. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, like it will be, it will be, you know, it 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 it, it will be a fantastic spectacle, like, and 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 Ryan Nocton will be going down there, and 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 everybody in the top. I mean, there's no there's no bad car in that rally. The rally can. That the red cars today and now is unbelievable. Like that have to be seen. Like everybody's car is top class. Like and Rob, hopefully Rob will get going. But like Rob is after a great West Cock and a great Killarney. So if Rob gets going, he'll be um they'll be busy trying to keep him behind him anyway. If he gets going, you know. So um, it'll be I think it'll be one of the best. This will be one of the biggest years of that rally. I mean, there's a savage amount of cars in it. So. I would expect if the weather comes right, I don't know what the stages are like. I hope even nice stages down there, like the Kalani ones. No, you're not, you're not going to make us work too hard. But um, they're uh, long stages. Is, I can tell you that they're definitely long stages. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. The, 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 the. For fellas like me, now you want handier stages. We're not with long stages. Wears out an old fella like you know. You want, you want, <laughs> you want, you want, um, you want nice dry roads. But uh, no, I, I think it will be a, a great, great rally. I don't doubt about. It. There's a, there's a great entry, like I mean, there's a great entry. So it would be, I'd say, to be very successful. It, and and the weather seems to be improving from Thursday on. So I, if we get the sunshine, it helps everybody, you know. Yeah, it's mad. Like the over fifty cars, I think, on the reserve list, which is, which is crazy stuff. It's, yeah. it's you know, it's the strength, the strength of things are, the strength of things. You know, it's it's really come back strong. I suppose is is what I'm trying to say. Um. And in general, then I want to go back to a few other topics, just deviating away from Carlo slightly, right? So we mentioned the RPM thing there. Um, let's let's go on to Mr. Penty Auricula. We were talking about greats there earlier. Uh, you had a bit of a, I suppose, a lesson or two that you learned from Penty Auricula. Uh, left foot break, and I believe being a topic. So, how did you come to get in touch with him? Uh, where did this tutorial come from? Yeah, well, I, I'm I, I'm always searching for ideas to improve um, improve myself, the car, and my driving. And um, I don't want to blame anybody for being slow, so I've been always trying to learn and improve. So, you uh, going back probably the early nineties, um, Pinty Pinty had a, a rally school in England, and he was teaching the art of left foot braking and I was always very curious to, to learn about this left foot braking because we, we, we would be reading in rally sport Ari Vatten and, and all these Finnish drivers and, and Pinty was one of the early the, the flying fins one of the early flying fins so um in more news anyway I um I see the ad and I was going probably to England for a holiday or for a week and we, we I was going at that time in the fall of the year and I said, I'd, I'd go to this Pinty Auricula Rally School. I've been reading and following Pinty Auricula for years. So I rings up the number anyway, and this Pinty comes on and this Finnish accent. And you'd be, you'd be nearly afraid to talk to him. Do you know what I mean? Because, he, he, you know, you, 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 you're, you know, to be talking to these guys, you'd be dreaming, you know, you'd be seeing them and they were your heroes. So anyway, I booked a lesson with him. And, and he wasn't cheap now, mind you. But um. So we booked, I booked um, a lesson with Pinty and we went over and I spent a day with Pinty in a car and it was a massive experience like to be inside in the car with him. And he was, he was the D man for left foot braking at the time. Like he, he had, he really believed in left foot braking. You know, left foot braking is a, is a, is a tricky subject. You want to be careful with it. You would have to be very good at it. I don't do it at all. And I don't know, does it even suit some of the Irish rallying because, you know, this is so fast, but uh, I spent a day with Pinty in his, um, it was a Sierra turbocharged in an airfield, but uh, it was very interesting. And Pinty was the old type driver, like he wanted to go sideways in and sideways out, like uh, um, Sebastian Loeb now drives completely different. But that was the the Finnish way of driving. The Scandinavian flick, he'd be showing you how to do that. And um, I, I remember, you know, he, and he, he showed me, you know, going down, he was showing me going down through these bins and we were in, in, in this road and he was saying like to follow the road, you know, uh, to avoid crashing. He, he, he's beyond about anticipation. You, you, a good driver 
if, if, if a driver doesn't have anticipation in a car, what his point was, if you, if you can't anticipate what the car will do when you flick it sideways, they flick back the other way. Uh, some drivers say were very fast, but they could never predict what a car could do. But um, when we were going, if you were going through a series of three lefts, three lights, three lefts, three, a, a good series of bins that would be all the same, he said, you, usually drivers will be cutting all the corners and then they come to the end, they'll crash because they'll be in the wrong side of the road. So he said, follow the road down, like don't necessarily cut left, cut right, cut left, cut right, because you'll, you'll get cut out at the end. And, and he was right, like I have seen that to work, but the left foot braking at the time, you know, he was telling me that, uh, I don't know, can you remember, he, David, he, he had David Coulter, one of his, was one of his um, students, and uh, in the early 90s, I remember when David Coulter one time was driving into the pit lane, and he crashed going into the pit lane in, in, in the Formula 1, and he said mm -hmm. that was after one of his lessons, because David forgot that his leg was on the left foot brake, he thought it was on the clutch, but he he, he said to keep practicing on, on the road, but one funny thing actually happened in that when I was finished with him anyway, he said to me, now he said, Mr. Randalls, he said, you go away and you practice makes perfect. So I said to him, well, I said, uh, I said, Pinty, we had a, 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 cap in, um, a woodwork teacher one time and he used to say, he, he, we used to say practice makes perfect. And he, Paddy Dwyer was saying, Paddy said, no boys, no, it's perfect practice makes perfect. He said, you, you can't practice the wrong thing You'll never, you'll never get it right. So I said to Pinty and I going away, I said, Pinty, well, like my, my woodwork teacher said, used to say, it's perfect practice that it makes perfect. And he talked for, he talked for a while, um, Kevin, and he said to me, um, that's a very good phrase, Mr. Randalls. He said, um, and when I was saying good luck to him in the evening, he said, he said, can I ask you something? And he said, yeah, can I use your phrase in my, in my, in my advertisement? I said, you can, of course. So uh, for about, Two years after that, or even as long as Pinty ran the school, he always said, it's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect. So I, I, I claim credit for that note in his head. So that was that was part of my story with Pinty. Yeah, so it's just perfect practice makes perfect. So remember that now, Kevin, who will give you advice in the future. So that was my story with Pinty Urichel anyway. Yeah. And you still, you still had to pay for the lessons, even though you gave him a, a slogan. Oh, I still had to pay for the lessons. <laughs> And to make it worse, to make it worse, and it was like, I don't know what it was, but it, it was, I don't know, the 12 or 1300 pounds, and I don't know what it was. It, it wasn't like 200 euros anywhere, but in, in the we must go for lunch, Mr. Randall, he said, we must go for lunch. I said, right, fine, we go for lunch. Said, Did I promise you lunch? And of course, being the, the, the naive carry man, I said, no, oh, thank God, I don't have to pay for you. So, and he didn't pay for me either. So he was tight as well, you know what I mean? But he was, he was, um, <laughs> Yeah, so I had to pay for my own lunch after giving him uh, the, the lesson. So um, I should have said, yeah, you promised me, Pinty. But I, I, he told me some very interesting stories about World Championship. I mean, he was the oldest man. Pinty won the RAC in 1990 uh, driving a Mitsubishi. And I think he was 40, well in his 40s. Um, and he was winning, I think, 89. Yeah, he won it in 89 when Carlos Sainz Carlos Sainz was at the start of his career and he won the RAC and doing it in 1992 with something broken to Sierra Cosworth. So he was well able to drive like a, a late in his years, you know, but he died very young. He was only 64. He got cancer. He died very young, but, um, um, but he was a difficult driver, I believe, to work with in his walks days. He always regretted then. He was, he was driving, he, he, he was driving for the Vauxhall team and they were doing very well and he got fierce money but then he was offered a contract by ford in 1980 to drive the ford rock and escorts and he took the contract and uh, ford pulled out a rally in 1981 and, and opal kept going and Vauxhall kept going he always re regretted, regretted that decision like he said that that he never recovered from that then so that was his big regret that he left he left Vauxhall. And even though we're offering great money at the wrong time, he went to Ford, thinking forward the big team, but then Ford pulled out a rally in 1981. So he, he never really came back then after that, you know? So um, mm -hmm. that was one of his regrets, like, I mean, you know? He told me that, yeah. An He's interesting man, an interesting man, yeah. What's your slogan going to be, Tommy, if, if you start doing some uh, tutorials? Now the Penty is your one gone. Is, have, you, have you got another little one that, you're, uh, that you might throw out there, no? Or a bit of an uh, sorry, you know even general. I was saying if Tommy Randall's went and did some lessons now or gave some tutorials to people, what would his slogan be? 
would it still be that or is there a <laughs> is there is there a paper don't ever, at this stage don't ever give up uh, but uh, it it is well like we went in 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 19 uh when was it 98 or 99 myself and Dermot Lynch went over to um the Isle of Man and we a, a very small team uh Pat Brosnan and um Pat Looney and um uh we went over in the back of a Mitsubishi van. The two boys sat into the back of the van and we'd all our things, uh, all our stuff in the back and drove over and we'd done the Isle of Man. But when when we um, when we were, we hired a car for the recce and we put up about six or 700 miles in it. And the, the, the poor man we hired it from nearly got a hat tech when we gave it back after two days. He did not probably where we went. But during that rally, we'd won very, we had no chase crew and we knew the car would make it the way around. But the day before the rally, um, and we finished, um, we went out and we 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 did put our wheels and our drums of fuel. We hid them in the ditch because we had no we had no help, and we we, we hid them in the ditch uh, in that rally. And we came around and it rained, it rained, and we had the right tires at the right place. And we would think we were thirteenth or something overnight because it was a very wet night. But in the middle of the Saturday, we jumped up. We finished fourth overall and 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 more class in it in the same year. But you know we, we that time we were rallying on a complete and utter shoestring budget, like, and we used every trick and not every trick, but then we, we had to use our. We we to be very clever on how we did it because we, you know, we didn't have a team and we a big team and we didn't have a, a big service wagons. We just everything was done out of the boot of the car or out of the back of the van, but um. We had great times like doing those rallies and they were simple, but there was a lot of work in them. And then uh, and going to Rally Man was, was a week's walk because we had to go to Belfast. I think we went out in Dublin, came back to Belfast, but um, a lot of interesting times doing things like that, you know. And, and the crew I had then, um, that we won Carlo, John Duggan, and I think Pat Boston was there and other fellas. We're trying to get them up there this weekend as well. Just we're, we, what we were doing now for this weekend, we've we done the lakes, myself and Dermot, and we're going to do Carlo. I don't, I'm not expecting to win it, but we're, we're going to turn up there anyway. So it's nearly 20 years ago since we were there. So we'll see how we get on anyway, Kevin, you know. It is tough. It's mad, the, the memories and the, the people you meet down through the years, the the stories you have. And I mean, you, you always have them. Like, isn't, isn't it great? And whatever you win and lose, I always say this in sport in general, whatever you win and lose or what you don't win and lose, the memories and the friends you make and the stories you're able to tell afterwards. When you see those people again, I mean, you can't put a price on that, like, can you? Well, no, I mean, they're the things you'll have with you at the back of your mind. I mean, they're, they're, they're working, they're trouble at the time and they take a lot of effort at the time, but you're, you know, that, that that's what makes a person, do you know what I mean? You, you have you have your your own bit of history follow you, you know what I mean? And and, and you can look back and enjoy it and say, look, we done that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, does, these things don't happen by accident. They take work. They take effort. They take, you know what I mean. They take a big effort to do them. So it's, it, 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 you know, we, we, we. I remember another time, we were getting ready for, for the rally of the lakes here at home, <clears throat> and going to scrutiny. Something happened in the car, and like I was burnt out. We were always flat out before the rallies for some reason. And I went. Um, I, I, I said I couldn't do no more anyway. And um. I, we got we picked up an engine somewhere. We got an engine and a bunch of my friends that Mort Sullivan and Edward Gibbons and Dennis and then uh, his brother uh, Mort's brother Dennis. A bunch of them came that night and I went into the shed here, blow at home. My mother and father were alive at the time and they spent the whole night walking in the car. I went to, to bed and next thing around six o'clock in the morning I had this car driving and um, they had a car engine put into the car ready for the rally and went away doing the rally the next doing two days driving. So them things like these are you know. People will turn up, I suppose, like any any sport, but people will turn up nowhere when they know there's something to be achieved or something to be done. Do you know what I mean? But they were um, they were fabulous times. You know, we make everything for the car ourselves. We design things for the car ourselves. Put them on. There weren't there weren't too many manufacturers that time. You had to be, you had to invent all the the ideas yourself. So that's what clubman rallying was all about then back back there. You know. And this uh, fabulous escort that we all know so well, uh, still on the go, or is it the same escort that's on the go? This is the big question. So we have Tommy Randall's now. Let him reveal all. 
the 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 eighty eight LK one thousand is the very same eighty eight LK one thousand that I always had. So there is no fear. It is um well the, a lot of the components in the car has improved and changed, but uh the spirit is the same and the uh, and the drive the overalls are the same and the driver is the same and the navigator is the same. So uh what did I say? If it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it swims like a duck, it's probably a duck. So uh, the car the car is the car and it is um. It, it it's it, even in the lakes there now like i mean we get loads of stuff now will it, you know as i said when we had the car before there was no internet but um the amount of texas and even Derm dermot was telling me there he met some 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 person he met in Kalani. he said he said he the mon the entertainment the two the entertainment each boys gave us over the weekend we couldn't get in any shop any ld's place in the world they really loved this wild driving pulley handbrakes. It, it, you don't make much time at it. And we could make a lot more time if we tied it up. But I don't know. There's something about that car, the color and the noise of it. And it catches the imagination anyway. You know what I mean? It catches the imagination. And uh, we had two fabulous days in Kalani there. The weather was dry. So we'll see how the weekend goes anyway in Carlo. We we, we, we we will try and finish the rally anyway. I don't know where we're going to finish. Uh, at at the competition there, you'll be looking to finish in the top 30 cars, 40 cars, maybe never mind 30 cars, you know what I mean, because there is um, every up in front of us will be half our age anyway for a start, but we, we, we'll go as hard as we can anyway, Kevin, yeah. The way you're describing the car, I was just thinking back at only fools and horses and the broom. <laughs> the broom and the brush. Sorry? That they were talking, the broom or brush out of only fools and horses. It was the same broom or brush, but they're Every part of it had been replaced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking yeah, there. It yeah, sounded yeah. like a, a, a pretty pretty good comparison. Mm -hmm. Listen, Tommy, uh, we'll have a chat again, no doubt, because I know there's, there's probably a lot more that we, we haven't delved into. But uh, listen, the, the very best look. I've really enjoyed having a chat with you. Thanks for uh, thanks for speaking to me here. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Good stuff. So good just, before thanks, finish, yeah. just before we finish up, I'll give a mention to uh, uh, O'Brien Cement, she Motor Group. The Seven Oaks Hotel, uh, Walsh School Furniture, Smith Trailers, National Automation Limited, and FAC, uh, GK Print, Derek Cummins Electrical and Mechanical Services, and Code Red Solutions. Plenty more content coming your way over the next few days. Take care.